Hello everyone, welcome to the second workshop. Today we are going to make an AI that can play Tetris using heuristics and genetic algorithms. First, let's take a sneak peek at the final product. Here's an agent that has survived and evolved over several generations. You can see that it's performing quite well, and it can reach a top speed of 10 clears per second on my computer. The speed might differ because it depends on the processing power of each computer. This demo on the right is slowed down so that we can see its actions more clearly. Although it does occasionally make mistakes by stacking the blocks to it, it usually resolves it without a problem. Okay, now that we know what we are making today, here's the detailed agenda. This workshop is divided into three parts. First, I will talk about the game Tetris and how we, as humans, play it. After that, I will introduce the basics of genetic algorithms, such as natural selection and evolutions. Finally, we'll write the code for the genetic agent together. So, let's talk about Tetris. The first thing to figure out before we build an AI is how we, as humans, play Tetris. I assume that most of you have played Tetris before, so I'll keep the explaining to a minimum. In Tetris, randomly generated quad tiles, or tetraminos, falls from the sky, and our job is to arrange them in such a way that prevents any of the tiles from reaching the top, which means game over. We can arrange tiles by moving them left and right, rotating them, and, in some versions, swap the current tile with the next tile that is going to drop. But just knowing the controls won't make you a good Tetris player. There is also, let's say, strategies that we tend to follow. Since machines cannot understand English well, we need to translate these strategies into heuristics. First, the whole point of the game is to keep the blocks from the top. Therefore, an agent that stacks all the blocks on top of each other is probably going to die quickly, and we don't want that. Next, since our goal is to clear the board, making holes will be counterproductive, since the tile will have no choice but keep stacking up. We don't want that either. However, just barely surviving is not enough to motivate the agent to clear as fast as possible, so let's give them some incentive to do so. We'll give them a score. Meaning, whenever they clear a line or lines, we'll give them a few points. But how do we clear lines more easily? One thing that most Tetris players look out is the smoothness of their board. The smoother the board is, the easier to arrange tiles. For example, the board on the right is really bumpy, and not many blocks could fill in the gaps. So, let's teach our agent to try to keep the board as smooth as possible. Now, we've covered all the basics of Tetris, and it's time to talk about the agents. We'll be using genetic algorithms in this workshop. Just like in the real world, genetic algorithms are largely based on natural selection, or in other words, survival of the fittest. In simple terms, it means that the stronger you are, the more likely you will survive. In Tetris, we can measure the strength of agents using heuristics such as the fitness value, the survival time, and the scores they burned. Once we've filtered out the top 50% of the agents, we kill off the rest since they will most likely be detrimental to the gene pool. So now, we have the top 50% of all agents, and the next step is to evolve them. First, let's pair them up and randomly mix their genes to produce a pool of offsprings. This, we hope, might generate an agent that can perform better than their parents. After that, in order to keep biodiversity, we randomly mutate the children's genes. We do this so that the future gene pool will not be confined strictly to the parents' genes. With all that technical stuff out of the way, let's start coding. If you want to follow along with the video, make sure to set up your workspace using the direction from the GitHub page. The GitHub repository will be linked in the descriptions. We will be editing three methods in the tetrisagent.py file mainly the init function that creates the model and initializes the weights, the getFitness function that calculates the fitness score, and finally, the model crossover function where we take two models and produce an offspring. The genetic agent complete class has the finished code, but I would strongly recommend following along the video so that you understand each step. We will first initialize the weights of the four heuristic values randomly, Note that although this function is called every time an agent is being created, the random weights are only used in the first generation. All other generations that come after will inherit the parent's weight. Next, we'll write the fitness calculation function. Here we need to evaluate the four heuristics separately, 
and apply the weights stored in the genes of the agent. The final fitness will be the weighted sum of these heuristics. The t-utils methods that you see are basically simple utility functions that calculate trivial things such as bumpiness and counting holes. You can take a look at the tetrisutil.py file for more information. Finally, we'll write the function that creates a new child agent from two parents. First, we'll randomly assign genes or weights from the parents. The getRandBits function is used to provide a random boolean value and will inherit the gene from the first or second parent, depending on that value. We need to do that for all four genes, and if you're copy and pasting like I do, make sure to double check for mistypes afterwards. Now, we'll mutate these genes. The random.random .random function is used to generate a floating point number between 0 and 1. And if that number is greater than the mutation chance, which is set to 10% currently, we randomize that gene. After we checked all four genes, we then return the completed child. We've completed the agents, now it's time to train and run it. Before we begin, let's head to tetrisparallel.py and double check the parallel training settings on top. The most important settings are the game count, which is equal to the row count times the colon count. This tells the program how many agents you're running at the same time. I suggest setting this number based on the processing power of your computer. Another settings that you can play around is, is the mutation rate. While a larger mutation rate leads to faster changes, it might overshoot the goal and have to start over. Here are the controls for the program. The green boxes will indicate the current best agents. If there's a tie, multiple green boxes will be highlighted. Red boxes only appear if you hover your mouse on top of any Tetris board. You will be able to see that agents wait on the right side. Statistics regarding the score, fitness, generation, and agent information will be on the right side. The best agent from the previous generation will be preserved and placed in the top left grid as agent 0. Now, let's run the program. questions or just want to chat, message us on our Discord server. All links will be in the description.